Welcome back friends and neighbors. Here's part two of the syntax video that I promised I would make. The first video, if you haven't watched it yet, and hopefully I will remember to leave a link up here somewhere to the first video, the basic uh, syntax rules video. This one is going to be more complex where I'm going to show you how to syntax with a conjunction and also um, past tense, future tense, if you choose to syntax uh, using those techniques. Of course, as you can see up in the starboard side portion, the upper starboard side portion of your screen, you see the syntax key. Gives you the parts of speech that we will be using. We will be using numbers to bank the values that follow those numbers. And there are 10 parts of speech up there. It also helps to have a syntax master key, which I showed in the last video and I will refer back to in this video as well, um, where it gives closure as to how the modification works and each part of speech, what they are, what they do, so on and so forth, their functions. Remember, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. So it is a prerequisite to watch the first basic video before you watch this one, uh, because I've already gone through the steps that you take um, and went very in depth on every, all of that stuff. So we start at the end and we credential whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. We see here quickly we have ly at the end of that word so right away i'm giving the association that it is non-tangible because of the ly but we have to make sure so we have to look it up from quick plus ly so quick living alive animate from proto-indo-european gwei to live all right so that is definitely tangible, but we see the ly used as a suffix, a particle, by itself. So that means ly is a negative particle, and ly, as given closure to in the last video, uh, the first part of this series, as well as other videos I've done on the ly, which you can look up if you want to, it deadens the tangibility of a word. This suffix is so poisonous that it literally deadens the tangibility of a word. So quickly is non-tangible contract. But as we go further and we go backwards, we see a comma. A comma, when we're syntaxing fiction documents, it behaves as a break in the continuance of the evidence. So quickly is standing by itself. So it can't be a one because a one is a modifier. And as you can see here, there is no word after quickly. So there's nothing to modify. So it wouldn't be a one. We know it's non-tangible contract. And we know that sentences or word groups would either end on twos or fours. So through process of elimination, non-tangibility means it will not be an adjective. It's either going to be an adverb, verb, or a pronoun. It comes at the end of a sentence or it's standing, you know, it's the end of a word group, which it is by itself. So it's either going to be a two or a four, but it can't be a two because it's by itself. And twos only exist, exist verbs only exist in the fiction if they're being modified by adverbs, non-tangible contract. It can't be that. So through process of elimination, it's going to be a pronoun. A standalone pronoun, non-tangible contract, because pronouns can either be tangible contract or non-tangible contract, just like verbs. So moving forward now, we've finished that part. Now we determine the tangibility or non-tangibility of the word store. The word store is tangible contract. I have a tangible contract with what a store is. How do we know for sure? We look it up. So looking at the data we have available here on etymologyonline.com, we see a lot of tangible contract 
stuff here. Uh, stand, make firm, provide, supplies, provisions, so on and so forth. So I have a tangible contract with those things. So therefore, store would be syntaxed as tangible contract. Family. Is family tangible contract or non-tangible contract? I see an LY there. So automatically, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, it's non-tangible because of LY. But we have to look it up to make sure to credential the tangibility or non-tangibility of word. We have to credential whether or not LY is being used as a suffix. Okay, so the important part, the part whether it's servants of a household, the earliest 15th century, so on and so forth. Um, children, parents. That's 1540s, so that's around 15th century, early 15th century. But the important part of what I'm trying to convey here is nowhere in this does ly credential itself as a suffix? ly is not a suffix to this word. ly is part of the word in an etymological sense. So therefore, family is tangible contract because ly is not a suffix in the word family. And a lot of people uh, don't know this or don't bother to look it up. They just don't do the work. And some people... And this is the funniest thing of all, to me, anyways, as a, as a grammar tutor. Some people will do something like this and just put an I at the end of the word as if, oh, now it's positive performance because I changed the letter. I modified the word. No. Everything must have a continuance of the evidence. And just the fact that you modified something makes you no different than the fiction. Family is tangible contract, as we credentialed in the prior video, part one of this series, the is non-tangible contract. So this store is a pronoun being colored by adjective family, and the is a non-tangible contract adverb modifying family. So now we've reached that point, as I stated in the earlier video, when you could credential the adverb, you can do that for knowledge cultivation purposes, and now you have this to work with. That's how you would treat it. So two, is TO tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Again, we have to look it up. So in the direction of, for the purpose of, furthermore, to toward upward, as long as, as far as, to, to toward, so it is using itself to give closure to itself, Um, one other thing that is a red flag for me is that it's not talking about a specific location. It's talking sort of in generalities. It's in the direction of, for the purpose of, furthermore. It's not the thing. It's in the direction of the thing. So to me, that gives a sense of non-tangibility and also something that negates the now space. So all of those things added together equal non-tangibility for me. So two is going to be syntax is non-tangible contract. Walk, walked, would be tangible contract in the past tense. How do we know? We can look it up. So oddly enough, walked is not in etymologyonline.com. There is no walked, but we have walk. It's travel on foot. Tangible contract comes from tangible contract root, proto-Indo-European root, W-E-L, which means to turn, revolve. I have a tangible contract with turning something. So walk would be tangible contract, but let's double check. <laughs> so even Google doesn't really want to give etymology of walk. So the next thing we can do to make sure that ED is a particle 
is to look it up here. We have two syllables in walk. The first syllable is walk, and the second syllable is ed. So there we go. Ed, past tense, right? Ed is past tense. Past participle suffix of weak verbs. So it's past tense. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that, but I'm just showing you that you have to be sure about all this stuff before you bank them. That's what a banker does. They're sure of what they're doing because you don't want to invest in something if you're not sure of it because if you do that, you run the risk of a catastrophe. And you can talk to any gambler about how catastrophic something can be when you're not sure of your investment. So we have tangible contract walked. It's past tense. Origin is tangible contract. Eastern is tangible contract. And from this point on, I'm not going to use etymology on online.com simply because of the time it takes to do that. I'm doing this for brevity. You can look it up yourself if you want to certify what I'm saying. Two is non-tangible contract pronoun in the future tense being colored by tangible contract walked in the past tense. Origin is also tangible contract adjective. Eastern is tangible contract adjective of, as credentialed in the last video I did in this, I mean the first video in this series, of is non-tangible contract adverb. So again, we've hit the adverb and we can do that. And we have a dog and cat left to syntax. Again, uh, I have to reiterate this. This also is a rule. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. So that follows that rule as well, as well as the five syntax scenarios, which you see down here. We have one, three, four. We have another one, three, four. So now we have a dog and cat. Cat is tangible contract. And is non-tangible contract. Dog is tangible contract. A is non-tangible contract. Since cat is tangible contract, it's either going to be what? Verb, adjective, or pronoun. So, but we have this conjunction here, which conjunctions are given a neutral condition of state, number value zero. Because conjunctions are neutral, and there are two conjunctions in correct sentence structure, which would be identified as and credentialed as conjunctions in the fiction as well, as long as they are functioning as a conjunction, which this is here, Conjunctions do not modify anything, nor are they modified by anything. They're just bridges between either any of the five syntax scenarios or between ones, twos, threes, or fours. So in this case, cat is a verb, dog is a verb, and they're both being modified by non-tangible contract adverb A. So the conjunction in this case is functioning as a bridge between the verbs carrying the modification to both. Now, I do see some people do this sometimes. They will syntax, they would syntax cat as a pronoun. And that is not correct. Under the logic and the rules of this grammar, simply because, as I said, and is neutral. It doesn't really affect anything. It's just a bridge. And if you say, if you're going to say that cat is a four in this particular scenario, then you're saying that and is a break in the continuance of the evidence. Think about that, folks. So there you have it. There's the correct syntax values. A little more complex, showing you past tense, future tense, and also uh, one way to syntax the conjunction, which you must credential that it is functioning as a conjunction before you bank that zero. Because if it was something like this, for example, if you put a dog comma, now and is not going to be functioning as a conjunction. It would be functioning as 
an adverb because you have a break in the continuance of the evidence. And if there's a break in the continuance of the evidence, then that means it looks like that. An and is not a bridge between anything. It's a bridge between the void and cat. There's nothing there. So therefore, it would be an adverb and not a conjunction. So there you have it. Part two, rules of syntax, complex. Hope this helps. These two videos, everything you need to syntax is pretty much right here. I'm sure some viewers will, uh, some astute and intelligent v viewers will contact me, hopefully, with questions about something that is maybe a little different than this, maybe a little more complex. I look forward to those questions. I would love to do another video um, with even more complexities to it, which there are. But the bottom line is, friends and neighbors, you have to look these words up. You have to credential whether it's tangible contract or non-tangible contract. And then based on that foundation, through process of elimination, through the rules I've shared with you, you'll be able to syntax anything in the fiction. But before you do that, before you go telling people, oh, you have a second grade reading level, or before you tell the people that, well, I'd never say that to somebody. Colin David Eiffel, Wynn Kohler Miller, he may be, have the charisma to get away with stuff like that, but to me, that's just condescending. I would never tell somebody something like that. But before you tell someone that they're participating with a fictitious conveyance of grammar, you better have it locked in that you know how to write and teach correct grammar. Because if you're going to criticize for rule one, rule equal, if you're going to criticize and point out a problem, you better have a solution. Otherwise, it's just the sound of one hand clapping. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like. And I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.